Hello students, welcome to this session. In this session, we will discuss about salt analysis. This session has been created keeping in mind the latest JE mains exam pattern. Let us start. First, we will talk about the analysis of acidic radicals. Now, acidic radicals are categorized into three groups. They are categorized into three groups. First, where we are using dilute HCl as the reagent. So, you have got carbonate, sulphide, sulphide, nitride and acetate ions. Right? Then we have the group where we are using concentrated H2SO4. We will use it for chloride, bromide, iodide, nitrate and oxalate radicals. Where we require the detection by special reaction like for sulphate ion, borate ion, fluoride and phosphate we require the precipitation reactions for the detection and for chromate, dichromate, permanganate we require the oxidation and reduction reactions. Right? Now let us group up all these radicals using the group reagent. Now over here in the first group, the group reagent that is dilute H2SO4 or dilute HCl, we have got the carbonate ion, sulphide, sulphide, nitride and acetate ion. Now what will actually lead you to a conclusion that these ions or these radicals are present in the salt that you are studying. For that, I have written the color and the observation that you will have. So, suppose the salt is having the carbonate ion, detecting by dilute HTSO4 or dilute HCl, you will get a brisk effervescence in cold with evolution of colorless and odorless gas that is carbon dioxide. Now, let us talk about the sulphide ion. You will get the colorless gas with suffocating odor that is the smell of burning sulphur that is sulphur dioxide, right? In case of sulphide, you will be getting the smell of rotten eggs because of hydrogen sulphide. In case of nitride, you will be getting a light brown gas that is nitrogen dioxide. In case of acetate ion, you will be getting the vapors with the smell of vinegar, okay? So, these are the radicals in group 1 and these all are acidic radicals. Now, let us check the second group. The second group where the group reagent is concentrated H2SO4, you have chloride, bromide, iodide, nitrate and oxalate. Now, in case of chloride, you are getting a pungent smell which fumes in air. In case of bromide, you are getting reddish brown fumes which intensify on addition of MnO2. In case of iodide, you are getting the violent pungent fumes which intensify on addition of MnO2 and condense as black. In case of nitrate, you are getting the light brown vapors with pungent smell and which intensify on addition of copper turnix. In case of oxalate, you will be getting a colorless, odorless gas which burns with blue flame at the mouth of a test tube and terms lime water milky. So, you know that it is carbon dioxide. Okay, this is group 2. Now, we have to talk about group 3. Now, in group 3, the reagent will be barium chloride, ethanol and concentrated H2SO4, concentrated HNO3 and ammonium molybdate, sand and concentrated H2SO4. So, basically, for sulphate ion, you are using BaCl2 as the reagent. For borate, you are using ethanol and concentrated H2SO4. For phosphate, you are using concentrated HNO3 and ammonium molybdate and for fluoride you use sand and concentrated H2SO4. Okay? Now, for sulphate ion we will be getting a white precipitate of BaSO4 which is insoluble in concentrated HNO3. For borate we will be getting the green agit blue flame of triethyl borate. For phosphate we will be getting a canary yellow precipitate of ammonium phosphomolybdate. And in case of fluoride ion, we will be getting the waxy white deposit of silicic acid that is H4SiO4 or SiOH whole 4. So, this is a listing of all the radicals in three groups. 
fine. Now, let us talk about their confirmatory test. So, first we are going to talk about the group 1 confirmatory test. So, you have got this carbonate ion. So, see uh, how you would read out this reaction let me tell you it will be easy for you then. See this is the salt that will be given to you in the lab ok. Now, you will take the salt and for with a spatula you add it to the test tube right. Now, make a solution of it and then add H2SO4 into it. After adding H2SO4 you are going to add calcium hydroxide into it. After addition of calcium hydroxide you will be passing CO2 through it ok. This is how you have to do the experiment. Now, see what will happen. When in this salt you are going to get add H2SO4, carbon dioxide gas will be released ok. Now, to check this you add calcium hydroxide into it ok or whatever vapors are coming out you let them pass into the calcium hydroxide solution. So, you will get a white precipitate of calcium carbonate. So, this is the first observation that you have. See in a colorless solution you cannot have any observation. If there is some gas which is of a particular color, there is some effervescence, there is some you know vapors with some smell that is coming out fine. There might be colorless vapors, but there is some smell or there is some PPT. These are the things which you observe is not it. See no ion is going to shout out inside the solution oh I am here. <laughs> it is not going to happen. So, you have some observations, some indications. So, these indications are smell, color and phase change means in the liquid something solid deposits, some smell comes up, some particular color comes up right. So, this white precipitate is formed. Now, if to this white precipitate you add water and carbon dioxide, the calcium bicarbonate that is formed it is soluble, it dissolves. So, that precipitate that was formed now it dissolves out because you have passed H2O and CO2 into it. So, with this observation you are sure that yes this salt contains the carbonate ion got it. I hope you have understood how you are doing this testing in the lab ok. Similarly, we have to follow for all the other radicals sulphide ion. So, this is the salt which we are expecting that it contains sulphide ion you will add H2SO4 to it. So, you will get sulphur dioxide to the sulphur dioxide you add potassium dichromate right. So, it will give you chromium sulphate which is green in color. So, the solution will turn green which will confirm that yes there is some sulphide ion in the salt ok. Third is sulphide ions. So, this is the salt that we are having on addition of H2SO4 you are going to get H2S. When you add lead acetate into it you will get lead sulphide which is a black colored precipitate thus confirming the presence of sulphide ion. For nitrite ion what we are saying that it is treated with dilute H2SO4, it yields a colorless gas NO and to this NO if you add dilute FeSO4, see this is the NO if you add FeSO4 you will get this brown ring complex. So, basically a brown ring is formed in the solution in the test tube which confirms the presence of the nitrite ion in the salt ok. The next one is the acetate ion. See, so this is the salt of the acetate ion or the salt in which acetate ion may, may be present. You add H2SO4 to it. So, what is happening? You are going to get this acetic acid plus Na2SO4. Now, if you add FeCl3 to it, you will be getting the blood red colored ferric acetate right and with the help of this blood red coloration will come to know that the salt contains acetate ion ok. Now, let us talk about the confirmatory test of group 2. First, we will talk about the chloride ions. See the HCl gas also gives curdy white precipitate of silver chloride with silver nitrate solution. So, you have a salt which contains chloride, you pass H2SO4 through it, you will get HCl in which when you are adding the silver nitrate you will be getting the silver chloride precipitate which will confirm the presence of this chloride ion ok. Now, let us talk about the chromyl chloride test. So, suppose if this is the salt that you are having fine as you see you are getting this HCl over here. Now, what we do is that we are adding K2Cr2O7 to the solution which is containing H2SO4. So, you are going to get 
CrO3, this CrO3 and this HCl combine and give you the chromyl chloride. Okay, fine. Next is for bromide ions, the bromide salt which is under analysis gives pale yellow precipitate of AgBr on reaction with ammonium hydroxide. And if you add ammonium hydroxide in excess, the soluble complex of silver is formed. You see, this is the salt. You add AgNO3, you get AgBr. Now to this AgBr, if you add ammonium hydroxide in excess, if you add this in excess, we will be getting this complex compound that is diammonium silver bromide. Okay. Now in case of iodide ions, we will say that if the salt contains the iodide ion, when it is treated with concentrated HSO4, iodine vapors you know are evolved. Now these iodine vapors on reaction with starch will produce the blue color, they will produce the blue color. So you see this I minus ion reacting with concentrated H2SO4 release iodine on passing through starch you get the blue color. Another confirmatory test the iodide salt solution gives yellow precipitate of AgI when you react this with AgNO3. Okay. So you are reacting it with AgNO3 you get the yellow colored precipitate. So this is the confirmatory test for the iodide ion. Now for nitrate ion the famous brown ring test. What happens over here? You take a salt, add H2SO4 to it. You will see that you are getting HNO3. Fine. Now you add the ferrous sulfate to it. You will get the ferric sulfate plus NO. Okay. Now if you pass this complex solution, fine, into this particular test tube which combines with NO and thus gives you this brown ring. Okay, so this is going to confirm the presence of nitrate ion in the salt. It is very important, they will ask you about this particular brown ring complex. Fine, previously also asked a question based on what is the oxidation state of iron, which of the following is the brown ring complex that is formed. So these two type of questions can be asked. Okay, let us pick up this question. Which compound will not give positive chromyl chloride test. So dear friends, you need the chloride ion in solution for a positive chromyl chloride test. So here you need to check CuCl2 give Cl minus N, yes. Zinc Cl2 also give, right, fine. This anilinium chloride also gives the Cl minus ion. But does HgCl2 give Cl minus N? No, it is a covalent compound, does not furnish Cl minus N in solution. So this will not give positive chromyl chloride test. So the right answer is choice number 2. Next question, sodium salt of an organic acid X produces effervescence with concentrated H2SO4. Okay, X when you mix with H2SO4 gives effervescence. Brisk effervescence normally comes from carbon dioxide but let us see. Now this X reacts with the acidified aqueous CaCl2 solution to give a white precipitate. Okay which decolorizes the acidic solution of KMnO4. So what is X? See first of all, when you react with H2SO4, you are getting effervescence. So I think we should start with Na2C2O4 because when there is an oxalate ion, this oxalate ion on combining with H2SO4 will give carbon dioxide. This is one. Now this sodium oxalate is reacting with acidified aqueous calcium chloride. So in that case, you are going to get the calcium oxalate over there. Now this calcium oxalate decolorizes the acidic solution of KMnO4. See because this C2O4 2 minus this is an oxalate ion. An acidic medium. A redox reaction takes place over here. MnO4 minus ion converts to Mn2 plus and this oxalate ion converts to carbon dioxide. It converts to carbon dioxide. Okay, and that's what it means by saying that it decolorizes the acidic solution of KMnO4. So this KMnO4 acidic solution gets decolorized because MnO4 minus ion converts to Mn2 plus and oxalate converts to carbon dioxide. Okay, so the correct option is option number. Right. The next question, 
the brown ring test for nitrate ion is due to the formation of the complex ion with the formula as now you should be remembering it what is the right answer the right answer is choice number three see first is not a possibility because you know no should be there second because h2 should be there cyanide is not at all present fine and the fourth case here there is no5 no it was not possible so here the right choice is choice number three so you see the questions that have been asked are very straight and thus you can get good marks in less amount of time right in the coming segment we will be discussing about the basic radicals